Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Two tips that if you act upon them, inshallah ta'ala, I guarantee it's going to take your Quran to another level. And this is something that, you know, unfortunately, I, I say unfortunately at the same time, I realized them myself through my own experience. I wish I realized them, you know, earlier. And that's why I want to share it with you so you can benefit from them and not go through the same thing that I've been through. And because it took me, you know, 20 plus years. I've been doing this now for about 26 years as a student of knowledge. And I came to this realization in the, after all of this experience. And I, you know, because there's a lot of tips I could give you. I and mean, a lot of tips, we go and read, you know, five tips to help you memorize the Quran, 10 things to do. And all of these things are correct. But I found that these two are the most powerful. And this is really what's helped me in my relationship with the Quran, making my hiv stronger, making my understanding stronger, and making my overall relationship with the Quran stronger, alhamdulillah. So these two, and they're, they're, they're basic things. I and mean, they're not something like, like, wow, I'm not going to bring something like, wow, I've never heard of that, never thought of that. They're basic things. And it's not like as they say, it's not rocket science. It's sometimes, it's, you know, it's, it's those basic fundamentals, those basic things. They're what makes, you know, make us truly successful in all aspects of life. When it comes to the Quran, I realize these two things or what is going to take you to that next level that you want to get to. Because a lot of us, we say we want to memorize the Quran, but we don't know what's going wrong, what we're doing wrong. If you act upon these two things, bidnillah, you're going to find, you know, in what you've been searching for when it comes to memorizing the Quran and understanding the Quran, being attached to the Quran, inshallah ta'ala. The first thing, and it's something I learned from one of my colleagues, a Moroccan brother who studied with me in Medina, and um, he's now living in Malaysia, and I found that he had memorized the Quran and, and he was very powerful, very strong in his hifth. And we were praying, and it was in 2017, we were praying behind, you know, great hafiz, uh, hafiz, you know, who had memorized the Quran in Ramadan and this. And if one made a mistake, he would answer right away. His hifth was very, very strong. So I was, you know, what happened? Because in Medina, he had probably memorized half of the Quran like myself, but we didn't, you know, finish. You know, it had been all these years, you know, he became busy with, you know, life and, and, and teaching. I became busy with life and Dawah and teaching. I didn't realize how, you know, busy I would become later. And that's, you know, one of the things that, you know, perhaps I should have done it when I was younger. That's why I'm sharing this with you now. So you don't, don't delay it like I did because, you know, you never know what's going to come. We thought, you know, in Medina, we'll focus on seeking knowledge and we'll memorize the rest of the Quran later because we have more time. Actually, when you start getting in Dawah and start teaching, you have less time. So, and, 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 and I'm, I'm happy. And I reach where I reach now with the Quran for 20 years. And then I found pleasure in it for 20 years after that. So you have to put in that hard work sometime to get to the level and to find that pleasure. So what did I benefit from this brother? He told me that if you really want to do it, if you really want to memorize the Quran, you really want to become strong and, 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 and well-versed in the Quran, he said you have to make it something that's fun, something that's compulsory. Not some, because a lot of us say we want to do this. I want to seek knowledge. I want to learn how to speak Arabic. I want to learn the Quran. But we kind of just put it on the side if we, we if we have free time. No, it has to become something fault, compulsory that you do every single day. And I remember the advice that I got from a great Qari of the Quran, a great a scholar, Sheikh Hussein Ashish. He's a Syrian scholar who I met in Sudan when I first started, you know, in, in my path seeking knowledge. And he, and I remember I, I remember I had memorized from the end of the Quran, from Surah Anas to Surah Al Taghabun. I read from the beginning of Surah Al Taghabun. I still remember. And he was impressed, alhamdulillah, with my recitation, and he made dua for me. And, you know, and he told me what I needed to do. And I asked him, you know, how can I become a hafiz? He said, look, he said, you can never, ever put off, you know, your, your daily muraja, your daily revision. You have to constantly revise. And that's one of the keys that we're talking about here. This first key we're talking about actually has several aspects to it. So you have the memorization aspect, and then you have the revision aspect as well. So both of them go hand in hand. A lot of times, we, it's, it's not that difficult, honestly, to memorize. The real task and the real challenge becomes after you memorize. What do you do after you memorize? Which is the revision, the muraja. And he told me for his muraja, for his the revision, he's, he personally does five juzus a day. And this is most of the hufad around the world. They'll tell you that they do five juzus. Some of them do it in one sitting, like the sheikh used to do early morning. He, doesn't, he said, I, I sit down in my majlis, like I'm here now in my house. He said, I do not stand up until I finish my five juzus. That's, that's his policy. Other ones spread it out throughout the day, but what's it, as they say, man, man qara al khams lam yans. That whoever reads the five, he never forgets. And that's why he becomes strong. But not just that, he told me that if I become sick, and like it happens, we get sick. He said, let's say I missed three days because I was ill. He said, on that fourth day, he said, I read 20 jizus. 
sounds a bit hardcore, but if you want to succeed, that's what you have to do. Look at bodybuilders. Look at people who are successful, you know, athletes. They put in that time and that effort. So if you want to be a hub of the Quran, one who takes his, you know, his relationship with the Quran to the next level, and the, and is to be from those who the Quran is going to raise him in this life and in the next, inshallah ta'ala, you have to be willing to make that sacrifice and put in the effort. It's going to take time. So you have to realize. So the brother told me, he said, look, you have to make it far, bro. He said, you cannot, you know, do it sometimes, leave sometimes. You became busy with da'wah like it happens to me all the time. You have to make it far. It has to be you know, a compulsory in your life. Some people work for them a set time. Like for me, that, that really helped me out. Morning time, I had to do it. You know, I found later, tried to change around the schedule, found I wasn't doing it. So you have to have that set time if that's good for you. Other people, if you can spread it out, like now I'm busy, uh, maybe I'm, I'm filming this now. So perhaps I might do it later. It depends on the person. Each You have to know what's good for you. What is the time that's good for you? Or if you can do it at different times, what's key, you have to get it done. As the brother told me. He said, for example, he said, when it comes now, here's my phone. He said, I turn my phone off. I tell my family, look, this is the time of Quran. Don't talk to me about anything. Don't come to me. He focuses just on his, and he, he, whether he mem was memorizing something new or doing the muraja. It became something that was fought, something that was compulsory every single day that must be done. No breaks, no time off. And you could take one day off, something like some people do, but with that muraja and hip, you can't really do that. Maybe you don't, you might memorize a couple of days and then do other days as muraja. It's up to you. What's in, the key thing and what's the most important thing in this program is that you do not Leave your muraja no matter what. If you want to do hiv five, four days, five days a week, four days a week, and do it slowly, but you do your muraja, as long as you get in your, your revision, that's the key thing. So how did the brother used to do it? First of all, made fard, made compulsory. It's the same thing I implemented myself too. But I implemented the, the lower level, like some other hufav, um, and not the higher level that the brother did. I mean, that was I, I did it in the beginning, but it was a bit a bit too much. But you could see that's what he did, and that's why his hiv became you know, very, very strong. So either I'm going to give you both options, and let you understand. So you have something new. You have something which is the new hiv, and then you have two types of muraja with that hiv. So you have al muraja al sugra wa al muraja al kubra. You have the small muraja, the small revision, and the al kubra meaning the major revision. Now the the small muraja is going to be for your newly memorized pages. Your newly memorized pages. And the Maraja al-Kubra, I'm going to explain it in detail. And the Maraja al-Kubra, the, you know, the, the, the big revision is going to be, or the general revision, you can call it, is going to be from all of your old hiv, whether it be from five jizus, six, seven. And the more you memorize, obviously, the more that will go into that category. So when it comes to the small Maraja, many of the Hufav, they say that if you memorize a half a page, quarter of a page, whatever you memorize, you memorize one page, that's your new page. You read this every single day. Then you add on the second page. Then you add on the third page. Then you add on the fourth page. That first page is still there. It doesn't go anywhere. Fifth page. Until you get to the 10th page. Now, once you get to the 10th page, when you come to page 11 from the new hip that you've been memorizing over the last you know, weeks or, or, or month, whatever it is. and it, So now you get to the 11th page. That first page now, now you subtract it from the daily muraja which is the muraja al-sugra, the small revision. You take it off that and you put it onto the any general or the big muraja. You put it with, with, the, with, your, with your old hip then. That o then and only then, that first page goes to that. That's what we said. That's, you know, one of the levels. And that's what many of the hufav did. But this brother, he wanted his hip to be even stronger, so he took it to another level. He did that daily hip for 20 pages. Meaning when he would come to page 21, that first page would go there. And, that, and I did this in the beginning, and I found it takes a lot of time, but yani, we're talking about like hiv like al-fatiha. Your hiv is going to be very, very strong if you do that. The, the second level is to do at least 10 pages. So that's the, the, the small muraja. The big muraja is all of your old hiv. Now you have to set a schedule. I even have it here written down on my phone. Which one is my big hiv? Which one is my small hiv? So I know where I am. The small, the, 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 the big, any, the big muraja or the general muraja, that's all of your old hip. This has to be done also for compulsory. For example, we, we recommend every seven days or every 10 days, depending on how much it is. And every 10 days, even if it's a small amount, it could be, you know, some say every two weeks. But the important thing is at 10 days sh should be a limit that you finish all of it. And like I said in the beginning, it's only going to be two, three jizus. 
And now you're going to be training yourself. Then it's going to be four, and then it's going to be five, and then it's going to be six. And once you constantly do it, it becomes faster, it becomes easier. So it's not going to be as difficult as you might think to finish. And then you say, you say 10 days in the end, even when you finish the, the entire Quran, you're going to finish in 10 days, three times a month, which is not difficult when you're a hafiz. Or you can knock it down to six or seven, like the ones who read five jizzles a day, uh, to make it even stronger after that, inshallah ta'ala. So this is the, how he designed the way, and he sat with several hafiz and took from them, make it compulsory, have the two levels of, of, of muraja, of, of revision that you have, and you're going to find that you're going to make it, you know, with this commitment of making it far and making this type of muraja, it's going to make your hiv very, very strong, guaranteed in Shalom It's something I experienced myself, and it's absolutely amazing. The second thing, it goes back to the tafsir, the tafsir of the Quran, and understanding the Quran. And that's going to help you with several aspects. It's going to help make your hip stronger. And I'm going to give you an example for that. And it's going to give you a ladha, a pleasure that you never knew was possible. SubhanAllah. When you understand the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, now first of all, just imagine now in the salat, as you're standing there, Allah Akbar, you're, you're, in, you're in your salat. You're in your salat. And your hiv is just, you know, on point. You're not... Uh, Making mistakes very strong. That's going to give you a, a type of confidence, a type of pleasure, a type of focus. And then add to that, you're understanding what's being said. You're understanding what Allah is saying to you. You're understanding what Allah wants from you in these ayat. Yes, sir. But what light's in an amazing feeling, I'm telling you. And this is something, like I said, it's not, you know, something rocket science is a, a secret that, oh, you never heard of before. Uh, Abdurrahim McCarthy is teaching you two tips. You know, no, this, any, it's, it's something, that all of the scholars say, understanding the Quran helps you in hiv. I'm telling you from my own personal experience, even though I understand Arabic, I, I know, I give lectures in Arabic, alhamdulillah, I understand the Arabic language, alhamdulillah. But when I really started focusing more on tafsir, making tafsir a big part of my life, and I started to teach tafsir, alhamdulillah, now I'm teaching the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. So I'm going back to the kalam of Ibn Abbas, and you know, from the Sahaba, from the Salaf, understanding the Quran really, really proper. I mean, understanding now is, is, is and because when you're teaching, it takes, it makes it even, even stronger, obviously, because you're doing more research and going back to different tafsirs. So the, the more effort you put into the tafsir, I'm not, and you, you and don't say because you don't speak Arabic, I can't do it. No, even in English language, I mean, and then you can, you, obviously you have to learn here, you strive and you, and you put in the time to learn the basic Arabic. I, mean, I, I know, you know, new Muslims who have learned the basic Arabic, they might still struggle a bit in, in, in speaking Arabic, but they at least they understand the Arabic of the Quran and they, they can explain to you very clearly in their language. Everything that's being said when you say it in Arabic, they understand it very well. They're well based in that. So it is something that's not that difficult. Once again, just needs time and needs effort. And then the more effort you put, then it's going to become easier and easier after that, alhamdulillah. But when you have that understanding of the Quran, it's going to help you in your hiv, help you in your focus, help you in just being attached to the Quran. Something, one of the most amazing feelings ever, wallahi. And it's something, and that's why I wanted to sit down and film this video today and share this. This is my experience. Say, man, if I if I wish I focused more on the tafsir like I am now when I was when I was younger, when I was in the beginning of, of seeking knowledge, not 26 years later. I mean, I, I wish I, what I found out three years ago about just this this commitment. I mean, like I said, it's not it's something. It seems kind of basic, but when you really sit down and do it, like, yeah, this is this is this is right. It really does work. It's 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 amazing. And I'm gonna give you an example now. Uh, I was given the the lesson the other day, the tafsir of Ibn Kathir from Surah Al Fajr. And Surah al And I found myself in, in my prayers, I've been reading with these two surahs a lot lately because of just the understanding I have of them now because of studying the tafsir. It helps you in your, in your overall understanding. Like, like you know, we say that the, the insan, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ In the beginning of Surah uh, al balad we have created the man in kabad, in difficulty. And that overall understanding when you look at all of the different tafsirs that the Salaf mentioned in this, and you, and you kind of just reflect on it, and from a tadabur standpoint, and how, how deep that eye is, and then you start to go into the falaqta hamal aqaba. What is this aqaba? This, you know, this difficult passage that you have to push through, you have to get through, you have to struggle, you have to strive. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing feeling when you're understanding, you know, your hiv is strong, you understand what it is you're saying. It's, it's wallahi, it's, it's an um, amazing. That's, and it, may Allah grant us more and, and grant us more pleasure in, in, in being attached and understanding His kalam, subhanAllah. And, and one of the greatest feelings of Allah in this, in, in this life and to have that attachment and to be able to understand the Qur'an, alhamdulillah. 
Another example from Surat Al-Balad, when it comes to the overall hilf, I remember myself in the beginning when I was, uh, uh, had memorized Surat, I memorized Surat Al-Balad when I was a new Muslim. I mean, that, my, my, I memorized it a long time ago. But I always found, even when I learned Arabic later, that um, I make a mistake in, in the ayah. Yatiman dha maqraba aw miskinan dha matraba. Maqraba and matraba, I'd always mix the two up. And perhaps many of you might do the same as well. Because it, 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 both of the ayahs sound the same. Even when I understand the, the meaning, yatiman dha maqraba, if you understand Arabic, it's, 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 it's easy to understand what that means. Yani, uh, oh, miskin and that matraba. Any matraba, you might have to go back to the tafsir. I mean, it's, it's from Torah, from dirt. I mean, maybe you go with the tafsir, but you can understand that pretty easily what it means. But you can still make the mistake. But once you go deep into the tafsir, and he, you understand when you, you understood when, when, when it, in, in depth what it means about yatim and, and he, the yatim who's the maqraba, the one who's the close relative, and he's yatim at the same time and his rights and his hukuk and all of that. And you go into the tafsir, and then you go back to the tafsir of Matraba, what it means, that maskeen who's in the dirt, and you hear the, the, you know, the tafsir of that, you'll never make that mistake. And if you make it right away, you're going to remember, right? You're going to, oh no, no, that, that's, that, that can't be because I, I studied the tafsir in detail. So wallahi, and I'm telling you, and if I went, went a bit long, so forgive me, I usually don't want to talk uh, this much about these type of topics, I leave it short and sweet. But well, I'm just, I'm very passionate about this. And like I said, it's through, something through my own experience that I found, and I really wanted to share it with you guys. Because, you know, people, we want to become more attached to the Qur'an, we want to benefit more from the Qur'an, and inshallah ta'ala, wallah, like I said in the beginning, with any, a guarantee, focus on, on these two, make it something fault. Follow the policy I said about how to do the muraja, how to do the revision with the new hiv, and you're going to find your hiv, and you know, just overall attachment and, and pleasure you find with the Qur'an, and we're going to add to that the understanding, the tafsir, wallahi, it's going to take your Qur'an to super levels, and you're going to find pleasure in your heart, in your salat, and in your life that you've never found before, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah make us all from the people of the Qur'an. May Allah make us from those who raise in levels in this life and in the next through the Qur'an. And Allah knows best. Allah alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabi Muhammad. Wa jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنْسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَأَى بِجَانِبِهِ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ كَانَ يَئُوسًا قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِهِ فَرَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ هُوَ أَهْدَى سَبِيلًا وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنْسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَأَى بِجَانِبِهِ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ كَانَ يَئُوسًا قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِهِ فَرَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ هُوَ أَهْدَى سَبِيلًا وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنْسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَأَى بِجَانِبِهِ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ كَانَ يَئُوسًا قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِهِ فَرَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ هُوَ أَهْدَى سَبِيلًا